Somebody says, write the equation for the formation of nitrogen dioxide from its elements. Well, you look up in your data booklet or whatever kind of information that you'd be given on a sheet of paper, it's going to say, well, here's the heat of formation or the molar heat of formation of NO2, which is 33.2 kilojoules, and it's a positive number. Well, if it's a positive number, that means that this is an endothermic heat of formation. So, we write the equation. That's the NO2 forming from its elements. Oh, hey, look, you've got one here, so you've got to have a half here. You've got two of those, you've got two of those, so you've got one of those. That's now the balanced reaction for this right here, where we put a half in front of the N2. We're going to put a half right here in this graph. Now, again, if somebody says, okay, take that heat term and move it back into the equation, well, then it no longer is written as delta H notation, and that 33.2 kilojoules, 33.2 kilojoules gets written over here as a reactant because the heat term belongs on that side when the reaction is endothermic. So if it's a positive delta H, you put it on the left. If it's a negative delta H, put that heat term on the right, but don't make it a negative when you put it back in the equation. Okay. Now, when you graph that, of course, what's going to happen is these chemicals here, in a net amount, gain 33.2 kilojoules to form this. So this has a higher heat content by 33.2 than the reactants do. So when we draw that out as potential energy versus reaction coordinate there, reaction core, what we're going to get is an elevation in terms of potential energy of 33.2. There's your delta H right there, and we're going up. Endothermic graphs always go up. The exothermic ones go down. And it's going to be a positive delta H value. Now, what if you don't have one mole of a chemical? What if you actually are given some other information, like a certain amount of grams? Well, then we have to do a little bit of stoichiometry. We take that last equation, and we say, okay, well, what amount of heat is going to be absorbed? And it really should be the net amount of heat that's going to be absorbed when 14 grams of NO2 forms from its elements. Okay, so you're asked that, and the key is going to be what it doesn't say here, forms from its elements. So you say to yourself, hey, if something forms from its elements, I'm going to write an equation that's going to represent the molar heat of formation of that. So again, here is that equation that represents the heat of formation of NO2 from its elements, and there is that delta H value written in the equation as 33.2 uh, kilojoules. Okay, so what do you do? Well, first of all, if you're given 14 grams, if you turn the grams into moles, and then, of course, you don't want the moles, you want kilojoules, are there relationships here that we can actually use to be able to cancel units and come up with an answer? Absolutely. Hey, Kim Guy, I'm going to just do this as ratios. Well, go ahead. I'm going to do it in terms of a lovely way of unit cancellation called dimensional analysis, which is what I always do. And if you don't like it, that's okay, because I'm going to teach it the other way, because I like this way the best. So now look, if you've got 14 grams of NO2 in this question, that's what I start with. That's what I got. And I don't want that. So therefore, i got to get rid of grams. And what do I want to keep? Well, you know what? This is energy per mole. And if I want energy in the end, the heat, well, then I know that there's something here, energy and mole relationships that I can use for unit cancellation purposes. So 14.0 grams of NO2 times 1 mole over NO2 divided by 46.01, because that's the molar mass. That's 46.01 is the molar mass of NO2. But I invert that ratio to be able to get the grams to cancel, and now I've got moles of NO2. But I don't want moles of NO2. I want the amount of energy that's released for that moles of NO2, and the relationship is 1 mole of NO2 to 33.2 kilojoules. I now get the moles of NO2 on the bottom, the kilojoules on top. Looky what cancels. It's all good. And now you're going to get in the end 10.1 kilojoules. And there's your answer there. So when you're given any uh, uh, reactions, write out the reaction, understand how much heat is involved for that reaction, and then just do the stoichiometry like you're used to doing.